الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد continue discussing the points that Ibn Qayyim he mentioned رحمه الله تعالى that if one were to gather them uh, and to realize them and to bring them to mind in his heart while he's praying then this would be from the greatest means for his prayer to be the delight of his eye for him to benefit from his salat and for this prayer to come to life and to find humbleness and humility and peace and joy in his salat and likewise these points are as well uh, a means to establish every uh, every action of worship properly and to truly fulfill the right of Allah Azza wa Jal in every type uh, of worship or in every action in every action of worship and we have taken th- two of these points and began the third one and the first one is sincerity and purity of intention and the second one is to be honest and truthful in the performance of that action and the third one is the issue of al-mutaba'ah wal iktida'u bin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to follow the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam diligently and to take him as a role model and to take him as a role model in general every action of worship it has uh, an inward and an outward aspect the actions of worship they have an inward and an outward aspect and uh, the outward aspect it must be in accordance to the legislation and to the law and to the sunnah and uh, the legal ways of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and likewise the inside as well and likewise the inside as well the inward a- the inward aspect of the action so the inward aspect of the action in general was clarified in those first two points and the issue of al-ikhlas was siddiq and uh, the issue with regards to the outward appearance uh, of the action in order for it to be legislated and in a manner pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal it must be uh, performed in the manner displayed and shown by the noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so this is what we were discussing in the previous class Ibn Qayyim he is saying rahimahullah that you have to be diligent to follow the Prophet وسلم, precisely in your prayer and that you have to strive to pray as he prayed and you have to leave off all of the innovative ways that the people have come with that have not been transmitted from the Prophet وسلم, nor from any of his companions عنهم, and likewise you should not suffice with uh, the minimum requirements that some of the people of knowledge have placed or have mentioned yani making the 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 bare minimum requirements for the prayer to be considered uh, performed in a manner where the obligation will be lifted so to not perform the prayer in this manner rather to strive to learn the obligations of the prayer and the pillars of the prayer and likewise the sunan of the prayer and to strive to perform it inwardly and outwardly the, in the best manner the as close as one can to that which was described from the prayer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not just simply su- sufficing with the minimum requirements and performing the prayer in a manner just to get it over with just to get it over with so a person uh, sometimes he will do this so he's saying not to be like this many of those uh, scholars mentioned that these are bare requirements others from the people of knowledge have mentioned that there uh, these are not the bare requirements rather that there are other obligations likewise so although some of the people of Nadas may say that he performed his prayer any in a manner that would suffice and remove the obligation and the accountability, others will say no, he did not fulfill it properly. Mm. So therefore, by any traversing on this path, in reality, he's exposing his action of worship to being uh, to being rejected, and at bare minimum to be to be very deficient and weak. So to not suffice with that, rather to learn. Whether to learn uh, the sunnah inwardly and outwardly with regards to the prayer. And just to make an example, the issue of raising the hands. The issue of raising the hands. It's been narrated uh, in uh, Al-Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah that uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he raised his hand in three places in the prayer. And uh, also from Ibn Umar has come in uh, Sahih Bukhari a fourth place. A fourth place so gathering the narrations uh, in general we find that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he raised his hands in four places in the prayer in four places in the prayer so the people of Fanatis have mentioned that this is a sunnah 
and if a person were not to raise his hands in the prayer, then his prayer would be correct. His prayer would be correct, and he would not be rejected. And if he prayed in that manner without raising his hands, then the obligation would be removed, and well, he would have fulfilled the right of the Salat. But he is leaving off this great Sunnah. So uh, the point is now not to just suffice with that, but rather to learn this affair and to strive to perform the prayer in, in the proper manner. And from that is raising the hands in the proper, sp in the proper places at the proper time, in the proper manner. So on Sahih Bukhari, it's been narrated from Nafi'i. Uh, Nafi'i, he's the Mawla, or the free slave of Ibn Umar, radiallahu anhumah. And he is one of the most famous narrators on Ibn Umar, likewise. Uh, radiallahu anhumah. So he says, yani, Nafi'i, he says, Anna uh, Ibn Umar, radiallahu anhumah, kana idha dakhala fi salat, kana idha dakhala fi salat, kabbara wa rafa yadayhi, with a raka'a, rafa'a yadayhi. وإذا قال سامي الله لمن حميده رفع يديه وإذا قام من الركعتين رفع يديه ورفع ذلك ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. So Nafi رحمه الله he says that Ibn Umar رضي الله عنهما whenever he would enter into the prayer he would make the takbir saying الله أكبر he would raise his hands and then whenever he made the ruku he would raise his hands. And then whenever he says, Sami Allahu liman hamidah, and he meaning whenever he's raising from the ruku, also he will raise his hands. And also whenever he stands up from the two raka, meaning after the tashahud at awwal, the first tashahud, and a prayer that has uh, three or four uh, raka, whenever he made the first tashahud, he will stand up and he will also raise his hands. And then nafi'ah. Rahimahullah, he says that Ibn Umar, he ascribed this action here to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are four places in, in the prayer that a believer, he will be diligent to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to raising the hands. And he raising the hands whenever one he enters into the prayer and whenever he uh, makes the takbir to move into ruku'ah. And whenever he's raising from ruku'ah. And whenever he's standing up from the first tashahud, whenever he's standing up from the first tashahud, this these four places, these are the places for raising the hands. These are the places for raising the hands. Three of them are established in Al Bukhari and Muslim. In Al Bukhari and Muslim, and uh, f the fourth one is established in in uh, in Al Bukhari. In Al Bukhari, so these are authentic narrations from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and a believer he'll be diligent to follow the messenger in this way. And with regards to raising the hands, the it has been narrated likewise from the Hadith of Abi Humaid uh, and the Hadith of Aisha and other than them, Allahu anhum, that uh, he would raise his hands, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hadwa Mankibahi. Hadwa Mankibahi parallel to his shoulders. Parallel to his shoulders, with his palms facing forward. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in some narrations uh Faru'dunahi or parallel to the to his ears, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in the tops of his ears. So this, it would be either in this manner or in this manner. Yani up to his the, his ears or to the shoulders. And this is established on the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So some people, they do not raise their hands at all, except for maybe in the takbirat al-ihram, the first time. And others, they will raise their hands, but they just throw their hands up. like just They just throw their hands like this and just move them. Like like it's nothing. I don't know what they're trying to do. To be honest with you, but it's very deficient. Mm. It's very deficient. This is not the, the the moving of the hands, along with every other action in the prayer, is uh, something that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we raise our hands because he raised his hands. So therefore, we want to raise our hands like he raised his hands. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So somebody said, "Why you raise your hands in the prayer?" So because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi raised his hands in the prayer. Well, that's why I'm praying in the first place. This is why I'm praying in the first place, because the Prophet Muhammad was praying. And, and Allah said we have to pray. And he's so and he's the one who, who the prayer was revealed to. And he's the one who taught the people how to pray. So therefore the prayer that's pleasing to Allah is the prayer of Prophet Muhammad. Not to mention he said, well, Pray in the manner you saw me pray. And then the companions are the ones who saw him pray. And they're the ones who prayed in the manner that he prayed. And they're the ones who transmitted that to the Ummah. So, and they were raising their hands <laughs> in this manner. So, therefore, I raised my hands. So, this is a very uh, easy thing to understand for somebody who's looking for the truth. But unfortunately, as the author, he's mentioning here, many people, whenever you show them the likes of these narrations, 
and, and, and they will see them directly in front of their face, the only excuse that they have is they will say, oh, I follow the meth habit so-and-so and so-and-so. I follow the meth habit so-and-so and so-and-so. You ask them why you don't raise your hands. He says, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm Hanafi. I'm, I, I follow the, the Hanafi meth habit, so I don't raise my hands. And, and I've heard this a number of times about the Hanafi specifically. They don't raise their hands. Even I heard an individual, he's, uh, he was an elder. This was a long time ago. But he was an elder, and he was trying to explain his position. <laughs> and but and I and I and I was younger, much younger. But I'm telling him, I was like, "There's hadith, though. It's like there's hadith to raise your hand." He's like, "Yeah, but it's just sunnah. So if you raise your hand, you get a reward, a, a, a bigger reward in your prayer. But if you don't raise your hand, it's no sin. So you know, this is his excuse. So we parted ways. So I'm thinking after that, I'm thinking so. But he's just like basically saying that, you know, he don't need the reward." Mm. So you know that if you do it, you get a reward, but then you just feel like you don't need the reward. I mean, subhanAllah, you understand? So if you, if, you, if you do it, you get a reward. If you don't do it, you don't get a reward. And what's stopping you from doing it then? You don't need the reward? Oh, what's stopping the people from doing it is because they have an attachment. They have an attachment to the ways of their forefathers. They have an attachment to the ways of their people. And many times that attachment will be uh, firm in their hearts for different reasons some of them is because they just have an, that love for their forefathers and the way of their forefathers and they don't want to oppose that others because if they were to oppose it the people will talk bad about them or, or they will say they will say bad things about them or they will not like them anymore or maybe they'll lose their job or maybe they'll lose position in society or maybe this or maybe that and so they will miss out so this is a, a number of reasons why they will in reality not follow the truth after it comes to them after it comes to them. So he is mentioning these affairs here. He's mentioning these affairs here. And these are examples of that. These are examples uh, of that. So he's saying that the fact that a person, he says, oh, well, I'm a, I'm a blind follower of this method or that method. He said, this is not going to free him in front of Allah. This is not going to free him from blame in front of Allah. And it would not be an excuse for him for turning away from the knowledge after it comes to him. It will not be an excuse for him for turning away from the knowledge after it comes for him, after it comes to him. If a person he was ignorant of a particular issue, and he was not from those who have uh, strong knowledge and, and understanding in the religion, and he blind, and he's blind following one of the reliable scholars of the Sunnah in particular uh, issues in the religion, then this is allowed for him. Then this is allowed for him. But if the evidence comes to him in any of those particular issues and the, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, reaches him and now he rejects that after seeing it, now he's not going to have an excuse. This is what he's talking about. This is what he's talking about. So there's a difference between the two circumstances. It's a difference between a person blind following somebody because of his own ignorance and deficiency in knowledge and then falling into mistake and error because of that and falling into mistake and error because of that Whenever here in general he's innocent, he's ignorant, and he's just following, blind following somebody, which is allowed for him, and he's blind following somebody in a position where there is an evidence clarifying that somebody else from the people of knowledge has a stronger position in the statement. But here he would have an excuse because he's blind following and because he's ignorant, and he's from those people who are not able to identify the evidences and, and understand them and follow the one that is strong. But as for the one that the evidence comes to him and it's clear, for example, somebody who follows the, the Hanifi Madhab, for example, and he follows it staunchly, and he doesn't raise his hands. And then we bring him the Hadith in, in, in Sahih Bukhari, a Muslim. And then we bring him the Hadith in Bukhari, and we show him that, 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 that uh, Ibn Umar, he mentioned this, the Prophet وسلم, did this. And then there's other narrations besides Ibn Umar, it's not the only narration. He just mentioned this one narration because it's in Bukhari, a Muslim, or in Bukhari, and it's the foundation and fundamental in the issue. But there are other narrations likewise, from other companions, Ali Allahu Anhum, clarifying that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam raised his hands in these places and in the likes of these in the likes of these narrations. So whenever he sees that, if if he rejects that now, it will not help him. The fact that he says I'm blind following so and so is not going to benefit him. It's not going it's not going to benefit him. It will not be considered an excuse. And Ibn Qayyim Rahimahullah Ta'ala he made the great point uh, after this and he says, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ إِنَّمَا أَمَرَ بِطَاعَةِ رَسُولِهِ وَاتِّبَاعِهِ وَحْدَهُ وَلَمْ يَأْمُرْ بِاتِّبَاعِ غَيْرِهِ 
And this is because Allah Azza wa Jal, He only ordered the people to with the obedience of His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, any absolute obedience to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and following Him alone. He did not order to follow anybody else. He did not order the people to follow anybody else. وَإِنَّمَا يُطَعُوا غَيْرُهُ إِذَا أَمَرَ بِمَا أَمَرَ بِهِ الرَّسُولُ صلى الله عليه وسلم And others besides the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, He will only be obeyed in the case whenever He orders with that which the Messenger ordered. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if the people, they order something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has ordered, or if they encourage the people to do something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has encouraged, then a person who obliged to that. Than a person who obliged to that. If they order a if they order something else besides that, and he and they order to do something that the Prophet ﷺ did not order, or they order to do something that's in opposition or in contradiction to that which the Prophet ﷺ came with, he will not follow him in that. He will not follow him in that. Then if we look in the situation, if he was a person of knowledge, somebody who's respected and reliable, and what's known from him is good, then uh, an excuse will be sought for the individual. An excuse will be sought for the individual, and he, for example, uh, one, one of the scholars who who, who who was upon that way, Abu Hanifa, for example, he didn't raise his hand, Rahimahullah. So it would be a, an excuse would be made for him. Maybe the narrations that came to him were not were not authentic. Maybe they reached him uh, in uh, with chains that were deficient, or maybe they didn't reach him at all, or maybe they reached him, but there were other narrations that he preferred over that. That any in the likes like this. In any case, he had an excuse. But as for those. Uh, who the narrations reach them with clear chains and clear evidences, they don't have an excuse that he has. They don't have an excuse that he has. So we know that uh, the great imams of the sunnah, they were not following their desires. They were striving to follow the evidences the best that they could. And the majority of the time, they will find that, that Allah will give them success to achieve that and follow that. But sometimes in certain issues, one of them will make a mistake or choose a position that is not the strongest based upon the evidences that have now been gathered and collected and clarified. So then the excuse will be made for him and, and the likes, but as for those who the evidences come to them clearly and reach them directly, then there's no excuse for them after that. There's no excuse for them after that to, to claim that they're blind following so-and-so and so-and-so. Because we're only commanded to absolutely follow the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we will follow the the, the the likes of these imams until uh, in, in these issues and uh, the people of knowledge they are a guide they are guides any to the, the evidence and uh, the means to clarify the evidence but they're not the evidence they're not the evidence and the statements of the scholars is not a proof in itself rather the statements of the scholars is light and guide to the proof they clarify the proof they help understand the proof they direct you to the proof and the likes like this. And so they have great status and great rank and, and, and great benefit, likewise, and great honor. And they have the highest level of mankind after the prophets and messengers. But they're not prophets and messengers. But they're not prophets and messengers. So we don't raise the people to a rank they do not deserve. And likewise, we don't belittle them as well and, and lower them and degrade them from the rank that they deserve. Rather, there's a straight path. Rather, there's a straight path. So here he says, Rahimahullah. And after this point, he says, He says, So everyone besides the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then he, he, his, his statements are, are accepted and rejected. Mm -hmm. Accepted and rejected. And if there's the, the, anyone who, who, who comes after the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then his statements will either be accepted or rejected based upon the the fact that they are in accordance with the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or not. So whenever they're in accordance with the statement of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then of course their statements are accepted. And whenever their statements are not in accordance with the sta statement of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then their statements are not accepted. Are not accepted. And then again, in this case, whenever we're dealing with the statements of the people of knowledge, they will be respected. They will be respected, but they will not be followed in their error. They will not be followed in their error. We understand this point. This is a major issue. This is something that, uh, if it's misunderstood, then many trials and, and problems will come about. Will come about because of the likes of these affairs. Some of the people of knowledge, they have mentioned that uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, He will make... Every, per, every scholar have a mistake. 
yani every that every scholar will have a mistake. This is something that's known. No, no person will be infallible in the religion. No person will be infallible in the religion, not whatsoever. Not Abu Bakr, not Umar, not Uthman, not Ali, not anyone after them. Radiallahu anhu. None of them will be infallible and never ever make a wrong decision or misunderstand something or have a slip in the affairs of the religion. This is only for the Messenger. So some of the people of knowledge, they mentioned that Allah, will, that Allah causes the people of knowledge to fall into error and that every everyone from the scholars they have a mistake or misunderstanding sometime and these mistakes will be made clear to the people meaning people will be able to identify them that that's wrong mm. that statement that's that great scholar made right there that one right there that's not right that one right there that's not right the people will be able to identify this so that it will be known that no one can reach the, the level of prophethood and it, so that it's known that the level of prophethood and messengership is a high level and a high status and this is only for those whom Allah has chosen and this is only for those whom Allah has chosen. Because if a person were to be correct in everything he says, and he, were to, and he were to achieve the truth in every aspect of the religion, then he would be a messenger and a prophet. This is for messengers and prophets. They're the ones who have this rank. They're the ones who have this status. This is the dividing line that separates the messengers and prophets, those who receive revelation, from the, from the rest of mankind. Say to them, O oh Muhammad, I'm only a human being like you, but revelation is revealed to me. Meaning, I don't make a mistake when I talk about Allah and His deen. Meaning, I, I don't make a mistake when I talk about Allah and His deen because it's re the revelation is revealed to Him. As for people after Him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and after the Prophets and Messengers, they don't have this status. They don't have this rank. So likewise, it has been narrated from the Salaf as well, like Ali Imam, Ali, Ali Imam Malik before that, narrating from Sa'id ibn Jubair, that they would say that there's no, there's no noble person, and there's no person of knowledge except for he has a slip or mistake. But the person who is truthful, and the true person of knowledge, his slips and mistakes are fewer and lesser can, than, than the times he's correct and he's good. And his deficiencies and weaknesses are, are fewer compared to his virtue and his good and noble traits. So therefore his minor deficiencies and his small slips, they're drowned out in the ocean of virtue and goodness. They're drowned out in the ocean of virtue and goodness. As for the fool and as for the ignorant, then he is contrary to that. The foolish and the ignorant and the one who is following his desires and the likes or the one who is not noble and not known for virtue, then he's, on, he's right maybe sometimes and he has some virtue with him likewise, but his foolishness and, the, and, his, and his recklessness and, 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 his, uh, and his base desires are, 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 are so great that his good and his virtue is drowned out in his evil. It's drowned out in his evil. So the point is that any, the, the, the people of knowledge, although... They are not f infallible and they're not free from error. Their mistakes will be few and, and, and little and, and, and something that's, that's drowned out in the ocean of virtue. In the ocean of virtue. So then it will not harm them. And then, in the, in the, and then likewise, along with that, the, their mistakes and errors is not from following desires. It's not from uh, following whims. It's from uh, human error, human mistake. And, and the likes like this, he will, he will strive to, to seek the truth in an issue. And he would not be given success in this particular topic. And that's the case. And that's the case. So this is something that they will have an excuse for. And that will not lower their, their honor or their status uh, whatsoever uh, with Allah and nor with the people of the Sunnah. So here the author, he continues to emphasize this point. And he says, وَقَدْ أَقْسَمَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانُهُ بِنَفْسِهِ الْكَرِيمَةِ أَنَّ لَا نُؤْمِنُ حتى نحكم الرسول حتى نحكم الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما شجر بيننا وننقاد لحكمه ونسلم تسليما فلا ينفعنا تحكيم غيره والانقياد له ولا ينجينا من عذاب الله ولا يقبل منا هذا الجواب إذا, إذا سمعنا نداءه سبحانه يوم القيامة ماذا أجبتم المرسلين so he says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that Allah He has sworn, that Allah the Most High, He has sworn by His Noble Self. He has sworn by His Noble Self that we do not believe until we make the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, an absolute judge in everything that we dispute in. And everything that we dispute in, and that we comply to His judgment and ruling, and that we submit entirely. And that we submit entirely. So he says, so it will not benefit to, 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 to make someone else a judge. To, to, to make someone else a judge in our affairs. 
uh, and to surrender to him, this this will not benefit us, and it will not save us from the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. And uh, this answer will not be accepted from us. Whenever we hear the caller on the on the day of resurrection, what how what did you respond to the messengers? What did you respond to the messengers? Referring to the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, the first of mankind and the last of mankind, they'll all be held accountable for two affairs. They're all going to be asked. Two questions that all of mankind are going to be held accountable with regards to. And this is going to determine those who are successful and those who are losers. مَاذَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْبُدُونَ وَمَاذَا أَجَبْتُمْ الْمُرْسَلِينَ مَاذَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْبُدُونَ what did, you used to, what did you used to worship? Who did you used to worship? وَمَاذَا أَجَبْتُمْ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And what was your response to the call of the messengers? And what was your response to the call of the messengers? All of mankind will be held accountable for these affairs. Who did you worship? And... Uh, and uh, how did you respond to the messengers? So every nation a messenger came to them. And uh, all of them, they had the same proclamation and, and same claim and calling suit to the same deen. And That you must worship Allah alone. You have no other true God worthy of worship besides Him. This is the call of the first of the prophets and messengers and all the way to the last of them. All the way to the last of them. So the answer to the question, The answer to this question is, and the statement, La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Wa ma'adha ajabtum al mursaleen? And how did you respond to the, to the messengers? The answer to this question now, after the coming of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is Muhammad al Rasulullah. Muhammad al Rasulullah. As for those in the previous nations, then each one uh, he, he will answer according to his, his, his Prophet. And if were, those followers of Musa, then they were required to follow Musa and believe in him. And those followers of Isa, they were required to believe in Isa and to follow him. And those followers of Musa, they were required to believe in Musa and follow him. And those followers of Ibrahim, they were required to believe in Ibrahim and to follow him in this manner. Alayhim salatu wassalam. So they all have, uh, they'll all be asked this question. So he's referring to this affair here. So we, we, that, that response will not benefit on this day. You know, I'm a blind follower of so-and-so. Whatever it said, What did you respond? How did you respond to the messengers? And a person said, I'm a blind follower of Methab so and so. I'm a blind follower that he's saying here on that day, when this question comes, that's not gonna benefit. That's not gonna benefit. It's not gonna benefit. Just like any maybe it's not as severe, but it could be as severe. It could get that way. <laughs> the 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 ways that the Christians, what do they say? They say any the blood of Jesus. <laughs> it's the same idea. <laughs> they point to somebody else. Mm. The blood. They say, what, what, what do you do all this stuff for? You did all these crimes. You say, oh, it's on Jesus. It's on, it's on Jesus. Jesus died for my sins. That's what they claim. Jesus died for my sins. So, so you know, I can do whatever. I can do whatever. So they're going to point at somebody else. And then they're going to, they, they, it's on him. But no, it's not on him. It's on you. It's on you. What you did is on you. He's not going to be asked about what you did. And you're not going to be asked about what he did. You're going to be asked about what you did. He's going to be asked about what he did. Like this. So we're not going to be able to point to some other scholars. It's on him. I'm following him. I'm blind following him like this. Whenever the evidence came to us. And we're not required to do this in the first place. We're not going to be asked about that in our grave. And nor on the day of resurrection. It's going to, it's going to, see, it's going to be said to you. Who is your prophet? Not who is your imam. Not... Not, not, not who is your imam or no, who is your shaykh. No, who is your prophet? Who is your role model? Who is the one you believed him and followed him absolutely? So this is a, an important point that, that shaytan has misled much of uh, the Muslims away from in these days. It has tricked them uh, and deceived them into, into blind following so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so and rejecting the sunnah and the way of their prophet وسلم, with this claim. With this claim. What do you have the author, he's referring to a noble verse in Surat uh, Anissa. He's referring to a verse in Surat Anissa. And whatever he's saying here, that Allah, he swore by his noble self. That we do not believe until we make the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a judge in every dispute that we have amongst ourselves. And then that we comply to his judgment. And then we surrender and we submit in entirety. And then we submit, surrender and submit in entirety. It's a statement of Allah, Azza wa Jal. He says, Fala wa rabbika. Fala wa rabbika. He said, No, I swear by your Lord. I swear by your Lord, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yu'minuna hatta yuhakkimuka fima shajra baynuhum. That indeed they do not believe. 
they do not believe, meaning their faith is not complete and not proper. Until they make you a judge in, the, in everything that they dispute amongst themselves. And then after they make you a judge, they do not find any hardship or ill feelings in their hearts uh, from, what you, from, what, from your judgment and that which you decide. And they submit uh, and surrender in entirety. And they submit and surrender in entirety. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he, he negated the faith here. Swearing by himself, in the, by his lordship. And ascribing it likewise to Muhammad. The lordship, <laughs> swearing by the, the, your lord, O Muhammad. And the lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then uh, and emphasizing that. The lord of, I swear by your lord, O Muhammad. <laughs> and Salah, he is the Lord of Muhammad. And he's swearing by himself. What is he swearing about? That they don't believe. La yu'minuna. They do not believe. Hatta Until they make you a judge. And everything that they dispute amongst themselves in. That which was revealed to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from the Quran and from the Sunnah, that's the criterion on solving disputes and determining who was, who was right and who was wrong. Who, was, uh, who, who should be followed and who should, who, who should not be followed. Who, who is uh, correct and who is incorrect, who achieved the truth and who was upon another path, and who was upon another path. So then he must be taken as the judge, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then on top of that, that's not sufficient. Uh, and then after that, they do not find any hardship in their heart from that which he has decreed, from that, from that which you have decreed. So not only should he be taken as a judge, not only must he be taken as a judge, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but likewise, you cannot a person he cannot find after he learns the judgment of the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he can't find any hard feelings in his heart. He cannot find any hard feelings in his heart. He can't. He can't. He can't have any opposition. He can't have any dislike. He can't have any unrest in his heart. Whenever he finds the the ruling and the judgment of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we find the hadith now. Somebody who grew up his whole life, he never raised his hands in salah. Then the hadith came to him, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he entered the prayer, he raised his hands. When he went to the ruku, he raised his hands. Whenever he raised from the ruku, he raised his hands. Whenever he says, Sami Allahu ni min he raised his hands. So a person, he would not be, oh, but oh, my, my, my father, my dad, my grandpa, my grandma, my mom, uh, uh, my whole family, the whole, nobody in my masjid does. Never mind your masjid. Now you learned about this right here. This is the, this is the, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the most authentic books written by a man. In the most authentic books written by a man. You understand that? The most authentic books ever written by a man is the Bukhari and Muslim. It's Bukhari and Muslim. It's in that book. It's in that book that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised his hand. So instead of having hardship and bad feeling and, and hard feeling, be like, Allah, alhamdulillah, this has reached me. It didn't reach them. Hmm. It's very clear. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored me with this knowledge. So therefore, he would hasten to apply it. He would hasten to apply it. And he, whether it's obligatory or not obligatory, this is the way to pray. This is the way to pray. This is the way the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed. So this is how a person he will be whenever he hears the ruling of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The one who truly believes, he has no doubt in his heart that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What does that mean? That he received revelation. That the the one who created our eyes and our head. The one who created our eyes and our and our heads, the one who's providing for our seeing, the one who is giving us all all the good that we have, he, the the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's the messenger. He's his messenger. He's the messenger of Allah. He received revelation. He received guidance. He knows uh, he knows that which we do not know from the good path that leads to Allah. <laughs> it was revealed to him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So whenever you learn his ruling, then you will do nothing except for follow it. You couldn't wait to follow it because he's the messenger of Allah. He has guidance. You understand that? If we follow our own desires and our own wins, we'll never, get, we'll never make it to paradise. We'll never make it to the pleasure of Allah. We don't, we don't, we don't even know what's good for us. Many times one of us will want something and, 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 and desire something it's not even good for us. That's why Allah, He says, uh, The Prophet, He is more rightful. And to the to the but to the Buddha. So we have to love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than we love ourselves because he wants better for us than even when we want for our own souls, because he has guidance from Allah. Because he has revelations from, from Allah. So the point is now that whenever a person hears the, the ruling of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning he heard the hadith that's authentic, he will submit to that. 
he will submit to that, he will accept that. This is what he's looking for in the first place. This is what he's looking for in the first place. And whenever he stated yani, on his tongue and in his heart, Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then along with that, along with accepting that, then he will also surrender in entirety. And what will you say limu taslima? That's the third point in this verse. So the first one is to take him as a judge. Take the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a judge, and then to not find any hard feelings in the heart from his judgment, and then to surrender and submit entirely. Surrender and submit entirely. So these three affairs here, the first one is the bare minimum, to take him as a judge. To take him as a judge, to believe that his judgment is the correct judgment, and it's an obligation to follow it. Whether a person followed it or not, he has to believe this. Every Muslim, he must believe that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is the one who has come with guidance and revelation, and his way is the good way. And then, to, to complete that faith, and to fulfill the rights of faith, is to, is to accept that and to surrender to it. Is to accept that and to surrender to it. So that's the next, that's a higher level. So the first level is like the level of, 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 of Islam. The level of Islam. The second level is it, complying to it and not having any hard feelings. That's like, like, the, like the level of Al-Iman. And the highest level of Al-Ihsan, that is the one who finds he surrenders and he submits in entirety. He surrenders and he submits in entirety. So the, the levels of the religion are being mentioned here. Uh, number one. Number two. And number three. And they submit in complete surrender and submission. In complete surrender and submission. So this is what he's referring to here. So the one who, uh, who takes other than the Messenger وسلم, as a judge, and he complies to his commandment. And he surrenders and submits to his statement. It will not benefit him on the day of resurrection whenever he's asked about who is your prophet? Who is your messenger? How, what did you answer? Well, what, what, how, how did you respond to the messengers? So uh, the, the author, he says, فَإِنَّهُ لَبُدَّ أَنْ يَسْأَلَ أَنْ يَسْأَلَنَا أَنْ ذَلِكَ Because فَإِنَّهُ لَبُدَّ أَنْ يَسْأَلَنَا أَنْ ذَلِكَ وَيُطَالِبَنَا بِالْجَوَابِ and because on the day of resurrection, it's, uh, it's, it's, inevitable, it's inevitable that he's going to ask us. And he, Allah, he's going to ask us about this with certainty. And he's going to require us uh, to, to answer and to respond. Qala ta'ala, Allah the Most High, he says, That indeed we are going to ask those who were, the message was sent to them. And indeed, we're going to ask the messengers. And we're going to ask the people, uh, the, 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 each nation, uh, that messengers were sent to, and we're going to ask the messengers. So the messengers are going to be t taken to account. The messengers are going to be taken to account about conveying the message. About conveying the message. And all of the prophets and messengers, they conveyed the message. They conveyed the message precisely and entirely and completely. And likewise, those nations that those prophets and messengers were sent to alayhim as salatu was salam, they, they're going to be asked likewise about how their response was to those messengers. Did they respond? Did they respond or did they not respond? And did they believe in them or did they reject them? And then if they believed in them, did they comply to them and follow them? Absolutely. Or did they follow, they believe in them, yet they continue to follow their desires likewise along with that. And so there's going to be accountability with regards to the coming with regards to the coming of the messengers and the best and uh, the final and last of all messengers that we will be held accountable with regards to is the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he says, وَقَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ أُوْحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّكُمْ بِي تُفْتَنُونَ وَعَنِّي تُسْأَلُونَ So the author, he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that it has been revealed to me that indeed you're going to be tried with regards to me and asked about me. You're going to be tried and taken to account. You're going to be examined. It's going to be a fitna. It's going to be a trial. It's going to be an examination. And you're going to be asked. You're going to be asked. We're going to be asked about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is something that is known. And there's a fitna. There's a fitna in the grave. A trial in the grave. Examination in the grave. A great test in the grave. And he, that uh, a person, he will only be given success to pass that test if he was truthful in this life. 
the one who truly took the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a role model and an example and followed him diligently with sincere faith and truthfulness and that and then it will be facilitated for him it will be easy for him to say uh, that my that my prophet is Muhammad my, my prophet is Muhammad who's your prophet my prophet is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but the one who the one who who, who claimed that but he ha had neglected the rights of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and preferred uh, somebody else's way over his way, prefer somebody else's statement over his statement. Maybe it will not be so easy for him to answer the likes of that question. Maybe he'll not, he will ha 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 and And I heard the people saying something, so I said what they said. Meaning they have doubts. They have doubts. So we should have no doubt. Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So from the meanings of that, La Matibu'a Hakun illa Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No one has the right to be followed absolutely except for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the right of Allah Azza wa Jal is to be worshipped alone with no partners. It's with love and hope and fear and trust and reliance and submission and surrender. Inwardly and outwardly. That's the right of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the right of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to be followed, to be believed in and to be followed and to be obeyed to be obeyed in public and in private, to take him as a role model, and to take him as a role model to follow his footsteps, especially in actions of worship. <laughs> especially in, in actions, in actions of worship, in actions of worship. So that's the right of the Prophet ﷺ. You will find many of these people here likewise who blind follow the likes of Madahib, and you ask one of them, why you do why, why, why you do that? He said, oh, because I blind follow the Madahib of so-and-so. Why don't you do this? The Prophet ﷺ did this. He said, because I blind follow the Madahib of so-and-so. This is a great, great deficiency in the fundamental of that statement. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. You'll find many of them likewise calling on graves. They'll find many of the same people. The same people have this creed right here. They have a, a misunderstanding. And they blind follow uh, their, their imam in contradiction to the, to the statement of the Prophet ﷺ. While they know, you'll find them committing shirk likewise. Mm. And this is the case with innovation and misguidance and preferring the statement of the people over the statement of the Prophet ﷺ upon knowledge. It would be a means for the heart to go astray. Uh, it would be a means for uh, the heart to, to go astray. To go astray, uh, and, and and you'll find many of them. This is their case that they called on the mashaykh, or they called on the oliya, or they called on the graves, or they or they ha or they're involved in magic, and they have their hearts uh, attached to to strings or to amulets or or to other things of, of falsehood and the likes like this, and uh, th this is a great 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 deficiency. What the other billah, what the other billah. What is the verse in Surah An Nur? And the in the end of Surah An Nur. Oh, Allah, he says in his book, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Let those people who oppose his commandment, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning the commandment of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَلْيَحْذَرْ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ أَوْ يُصِيبُهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ Or let, let those people who oppose and turn away and reject the command of the of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Beware or else a fitna will befall them Or a, a painful punishment Al Imam Ahmad he said Tadruna mal fitna Do you know what is the fitna? That is being referred to here He said a shirk A shirk So a person he will oppose the commandment of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And he will reject that and turn away from that And prefer the command or the statement or the way of another person besides him Until he falls into disbelief Or until he falls into shirk Or until he is afflicted with a severe a severe and painful punishment. What do you have to The point is, opposing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon knowledge is nothing light. It's nothing light. This is something major and can lead a person to to falling into disbelief and to falling into shirk. What do you have to What do you have to And this is something that we see yani, that's, that's prevalent and widespread. Prevalent and widespread. Those people who are calling on the graves, those people who are calling on, on, on the saints, those people who are calling uh, on the righteous and the likes like this, those who are calling on others besides Allah, those who have attachments to amulets and to charms, and they have fallen into these deviant ways, you will find many of them likewise, yani they, they, they are in opposition to the Prophet and his statements and his sunnah and his laws and legal ways. So these affairs, they go hand in hand with the other billah. They go hand in hand with the other billah. So you, just as we have to actualize, Actualize and fulfill the rights of La ilaha illallah, 
we have to actualize and fulfill the rights of Muhammad Rasulullah. So these statements, they have rights. They have both statements, they have meanings. They have great and the most beneficial and profound meanings. And likewise, they have requirements and conditions that must be fulfilled in order for a person to have actualized that statement and to bear and to carry that statement properly. And according to how well one understands that and fulfills those rights will determine, will determine his status and rank in this life and his safety and security from the anger and the punishment of Allah and how well he will be guided on the straight path. And how well he will be guided on the straight path in this life and the hereafter. Those who fulfill those rights properly, truthfully, inwardly, and outward to the best of their ability. Along while they recognize their own shortcomings and deficiencies, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them. He will guide them in all aspects of their life. In this life and in the hereafter. يَهْدِيهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِإِيمَانِهِمْ As for those who are deficient in that, and negligent in that, and have... Uh, uh, fallen into contradictions with regards to that then their guidance and their light will be deficient accordingly and also they will be exposed to the danger and to the harms of this life and, and, and misguidance in this life and also to the dangers and the harms in the hereafter accordingly accordingly so this is of uh, of utmost importance the author he says yani al masala yani that it has the, in the statement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it has been revealed to me that you're going to be tried you want to be tested uh, and asked about me? The author, he says, يعني المسألة في القبر Meaning, meaning the question in the grave. فَمَنْ انْتَهَتْ إِلَيْهِ سُنَّةُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ وَتَرَكَهَا لِقَوْلِ أَحَدِ مِنَ النَّاسِ فَسَيَرِدُ يَوْمَ قِيَامَةِ وَيَعْلَمْ <laughs> Subhanallah. He's, he's serious, man. <laughs> he says, so who, whoever the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa has reached him and then he left it for the statement of somebody else from the people, he's going to come to the day. He's going to come on the day of judgment. He's going to know. <laughs> he's going to come on the day of judgment. He's going to know. Who, whoever the statement, whoever the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa reached him and then he left it and turned away from it for the statement of somebody else from mankind, that he's going to come on the day of resurrection and he's going to know. And he's going to know the great error that he fell, in, that, that he fell into and, 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 and the great dangers that he's facing now, that he's facing now. So this has been mentioned likewise uh, in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah, he mentioned in Surah uh, Furqan, وَيَوْمَ يَعْضُوا الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَا الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَ لَيْتَنِ لَمَّا اتَّخِذْ فُلَانِ خَلِيلًا لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عن الذِّكْرِ بَعْدِ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions about on the day of resurrection, the, the, the one who is a wrongdoer and the one who is an oppressor, the one who is upon, upon a foul path in this life with the other billah, working oppression and, and falling into crimes and actions of disobedience and misguidance. يَوْمَ وَيَوْمَ يَرُبُ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ Whenever the oppressor, he's going to be biting on his own hands. If I, if I had only taken a path with the messenger. Mm. This is where his remorse is going to be. This is where, his, where his, re, his regret is going to be. If I had only taken a path, if I had only followed the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was right there. He was right there. I, I seen the path. I learned his sunnah. I knew his way. And then he didn't, he didn't follow it. What is his remorse going to be? Oh, if I only followed the path of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, then he's going to say, Ya Laytani, uh, Ya Waylata Laytani, Lemma Takhith Fulan is Khalida. Oh, if I had not only taken, if I had only not taken so and so as my companion. And he, because he took this person as his companion and friend, it was a means to mislead him away from the way of the Prophet. Laqad Awalani, Ani Dikiri, Badi Ith Jaani, Wakana Shaytan Ulit and Sani Hadula. Indeed, this person had misled me. Away from the reminder, meaning away from the straight path and the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal uh, in the Quran uh, after it has come to me. And indeed, the shaitan, he is uh, one who abandons and leaves a person in the time of need. Any shaitan, he will whisper and suggest and he will lure the people and make promises, false promises. He makes false promises and then. When it's time to fulfill, he'll run away. He'll run away. Inni akhafullah rabbil alameen. Shaitan, he says this. He'll run away and leave the person. He said, I fear Allah, Lord of the worlds. Like this. I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you, you, 
I didn't do anything except for call you. You and you for a job to me. I called you and told you and invited you and and you responded to me. For that alone, you will lose your fuss. Don't blame me. Blame your own self. This is what he was saying. Allah he mentioned about the shaitan what he was saying the likes of this. So, so a, a person he must uh, he must be sincere in his shahada and he must hold fast to that knowledge that he knows and show preference to that and not give preference to anything from his customs or his ways or his cultures or anything that people are upon when it's in a contradiction to the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So what has come from Imam Malik with regards to this? Rahimahullah he says. As-Sunnah Safinatu Nuh As-Sunnah Safinatu Nuh That the Sunnah is the, is the ship of Noah The ship of Noah The Sunnah for us today is the ship of Noah Man rakibaha naja Wa man takhallafa anha halak Whoever aboards the ship he will be safe Whoever aboards the ship he will be safe And whoever turns away from it he will be, he will, he will be destroyed He will be destroyed So in the time of Nuh a.s. it was a real ship and there are real waves, any waves that we're facing, the waves that they were facing. And whoever did not get on the ship, they were drowned in those waves, and they were destroyed and they died. And they were made an example. They were made an example, and they were the losers. And those who boarded the ship along with him, then they were safe. And they, they were in safety and security, and they were the winners. <laughs> and they had the praiseworthy and good outcome. And likewise, after the coming of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the trials of life, and the trials of life and the, and the waves uh, and the ocean of shubuhat and shahawat and jahalat, ignorance and misguidance and, and misunderstanding and innovation and desires and whims uh, and, and the likes like this, these are like, oh, these are like waves uh, of misguidance, waves of ignorance and darkness and yani the ocean of life. The only way to sail those seas safely and to deal with those, uh, with, with, with those waves properly and to be safe in that, to not drown and misguidance and to not drown in following desires and whims is to hold fast to the sunnah is to hold fast to the sunnah the one who holds fast to the sunnah it will carry him it will carry him he, he'll be raised he'll be high he'll be lofty he'll be floating upon those waves and he will be uh, saved by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jinn. and it, it has been mentioned likewise from a zuhri rahimahullah he will say ta'atamassuku bi sunnah najat atamassuk bi sunnah najat holding fast to the sunnah and not letting that go for anything or anyone, this is safety and sa savior. This is the means of savior. Well, a person, he wants to have safety and savior in this life and the hereafter, any that he must hold fast to the, the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I took a long, a long time this morning. I have a few more statements We want to finish this topic here And go to the next one So just to close yani, uh, Just to close To, to further emphasize This affair the, the issue of blind following That we don't blind follow anyone And in reality The imams of the sunnah They never ordered anyone to blind follow them Rather they forbade them from blind following them If you These people These people who the, that Today who they, they blind follow, those whom they blind follow, they told them don't blind follow them. And then these people today, they blind, they claim they blind follow these individuals, they only blind follow them in the subsidiary issues of the religion. How to pray, how to fast, and, and the likes like that. They don't blind follow them in their creed and belief, whether they contradict them 100%. They contradict them from their very foundation with regards to the creed and belief, the, the, the creed and belief of Imam Malik and, and, and the, the, the creed and belief of the four Imams is one, is one, the, the proper creed, the proper belief, believing in Allah Azza wa Jalla in the proper manner, having Tawheed, the correct Tawheed, Tawheed al-Khalis. None of them were calling on graves. None of them were worshiping graves. None of them were making, uh, making a birthday. And none of them were in doing, none of them was upon none of these affairs. Mm. So these people who blind followed them today, who blind following up until today, they're only blind following them in these issues that are, are from the actions of Bad Islam. As for the foundations and the fundamentals of the deen, they don't blind follow them in that. They don't blind follow them in that. And in any case, the, the, the people of knowledge, the four Imams specifically now that we're talking about, they never ordered the people to blind follow them. Rather, they, they ordered the people to follow the evidences that they have come with and the proof that they have come with. And if they ever, they have all advised in one way or another, their followers that if you ever see my statement is contrary to the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, turn away from my statement. Mm. They turn away from my statement and follow that, you, that what you know from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah, he says uh, 
It's, he said, it's not allowed for anyone to follow my statement and not know the proof that I have for that. It's not allowed. It's not allowed. He's not, it's not allowed for anyone to blind follow me and not even know and, and to take my statement and not know the evidence that I have for that. Mm -hmm. Meaning he's, he's saying himself, I'm not making this statement based upon my desires and whims, whether I'm saying this based upon the evidence that reached me. Mm -hmm. So don't follow me, but I only follow mm -hmm. rather follow, know the evidence that I'm staying. And then if you see that my statement is in accordance now, alhamdulillah, let's follow this mm -hmm. together. So this is the way the people of knowledge, they don't, don't follow me, rather take my hand. Come on, I'll show you the proof. Mm -hmm. I'll show you the proof. Let's go. We follow it together. We follow it together. It's not about following me as an individual or following them as an individual. Whether it's about following him, <laughs> the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the scholars, they're gonna grab your hand and take you there, show you there, and the likes like this. So this is the case. So it has been narrated from Imam Malik, rahimahullah. He says, "Laisa ahadun bad al-Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam illa wa yuqadu min qawlihi wa yutraku illa al-Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam." And this is the statement that he is referring to in this portion here. The author, yeah, the author, he he mentioned a similar statement, but the 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 one who this statement is well known, uh, it, it's well known that he ascribed to him was Imam Malik, rahimahullah. He says, "Laisa ahadu bade Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam illa wa yuqadu min qawlihi wa yutrak." There's no one, there's no one after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam except for his statements are are accepted or rejected. Illa and Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, except for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he's the only one that you never reject anything he says. He's the only because he's the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So you don't reject anything he says. As for everybody else, then sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. And we've seen likewise those who are upright and noble from the people of knowledge, they're right more than they're wrong. <laughs> and they're and they're wrong. The time that they're wrong is drowned out. And the virtue of being right and being good and, and and achieving the truth, alhamdulillah. So there's an excuse for them. But the point is, we don't follow anyone absolutely, except for the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ali Malik he says, "Inna ma ana basharum uqtiu wa usib, fanzuru fi ra'i, fa kullu ma wafq al kitab wa sunna, fa khuduhu wa kullu ma lam yuwafq al kitab wa sunna, fa truku." Imam Malik, he says, Rahimahullah, is I'm only a human being. I make mistakes. I, I'm, I'm wrong and I'm right. I'm only a human being. I'm wrong and I'm right. And he, sometimes I'm wrong and sometimes I'm right. He says, so look to my position. Look to my position. Look to my, to, look to, look to my statements and my positions and the religion. If you find that they're in accordance to the book and to the sunnah, then take them. And if you find that they're not in accordance to the, the book and the sunnah, then leave them. Then leave them. This is, for, this is at the peak uh, uh, of... Of justice and sincere advice, yeah, sincere advice. He's he's giving sincere advice, and he's I'm an imam. You are all following me and, and taking my advice, but this is the reality. I make mistakes. Sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. Watch out! You're learning from me. I'm I'm, I'm your teacher. I'm helping. You. Well, but be careful. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. So don't make my statement the criterion. Rather, whatever what you do with my statements. As you put them in the scale of the book and the sunnah. So whatever you find that I have stated and the positions that I'm following is in accordance with the book and the sunnah, then take that. Because they're in accordance with the book and the sunnah. But whatever I have made that's contrary to that, then leave it. Then leave it. <laughs> but inshallah, he will be excused, but you will not be excused. <laughs> he, will, he will be excused, but you will not be excused. Alimam Mashafi, he says, Rahimahullah, Ajma' al muslimuna على من استبارت له سنة عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لم يحل له أن يدعها لقول أحد This is from the most beautiful statements uh, of Adima Mashafi رحمه الله أجمع المسلمون The Muslims they have a, a consensus uh, 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 They have a consensus على أن من استبارت له سنة عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لم يحل له أن يدعها لقول أحد that the, that the Muslims have a consensus that whoever a sunnah from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa has become clear to him, it's not allowed for him to leave it for the statement of anybody. Mm -hmm. Whoever the who, whoever a sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa has become clear to him, it's not allowed for him to leave that sunnah for the statement of anybody, no matter who he is. Mm -hmm. No matter who he is. There's a consensus about this he's saying, meaning he's referring to the consensus of the companions. Uh, and the tabi'in and the likes uh, after them. Imam Ali Imam Shafi he died in the year two hundred and four. Imam Malik he died in the year one hundred and seventy nine. 
Likewise, Imam uh, Ashafi says, if the Sahih Hadith, فهو مذهبي. If the Hadith is authentic, then that's my Madhab. What's your Madhab? <laughs> Imam Shafi said, my Madhab, my school of thought, is if the, if the Hadith is authentic, then that's my school of thought. If the, if the Hadith is authentic, then that's my school of thought. Mm. That's my school, that, that, that's my Madhab. So the Madhab is, is not a person's own position and, 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 and desires and whims, rather it's uh, that which has been affirmed authentically on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We close with this statement from Al Imam Ahmed, Rahimullah, he died in the year 241. He says, He said, Al Imam Ahmed, Rahimullah, he says, Do not blind follow me. Do not blind follow me. Do not blind follow Madik. Do not blind follow Al Shafi'i. Do not blind follow Al Uza'i. Do not blind follow Al Thawri. He said, but rather take from where they took from. But rather take from where they took from. Take from where they took from. So you don't blind follow them, rather you take from where they took from. So whenever their statements are in accordance to that which is revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is what you follow. This is what you follow. So we love the Imams of the Sunnah. And we draw near to Allah Azza wa by loving them. We love the Imams of the Sunnah. Uh, uh, these men here, Al-Thawri, Sufyan al -Thawri, we love him for the sake of Allah, mm -hmm. from the greatest of the scholars of Hadith. He died in the year 161, Abu Abdullah, Al-Uzai, Al-Uzai, Abu Rahman, Abu Amr, Al-Uzai, he died in the year 156, 156, Taqriban, from the greatest of the scholars of Hadith. We love them. We love them. Al-Imam Malik, Al-Imam Shafi, Al-Imam Ahmed, we love them. We love them for the sake of Allah and for the great benefit that they have. But we love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam more. But we love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam more. You understand that? <laughs> we love him more. So if we're never going to follow their statement over his statement. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We only love them because of how they held fast to his statement. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's the reason why we love them, anyways. We love them any for the sake of Allah, because they were upon the way of the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we never preferred their statements over the statement of. of of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even make sense. But this is the way of the devil. He's, he, he, makes, he makes these affairs and he, uh, unclear. He brings those shubuhat. These people that have shubuhat, how they reach to these devils, how do they reach to these devils, they're gonna say, they're gonna say to you, if you tell them, uh, if, you, if, you, if you show them the hadith that's contrary to their madhab, what are they gonna say? You know? Do you know better than Imam Abu Hanifa? Do you know better than Imam Malik? <laughs> Who knows better? <laughs> They're gonna say this to you. They're gonna say this to you. So, so, so you gotta tell them. Okay, khalas. Who knows better, Imam Malik or the Messenger of Allah? <laughs> so Imam Malik, maybe the Hadith of the Messenger didn't reach him. Maybe the maybe this Hadith didn't reach the Imam Malik, for example, or maybe it did, but with a different chain. Or, or maybe, or maybe there's a different. There's many different things. So, so now the, you're not. It's not about who. No, that Imam Malik, he knows more than me. I'm not. What, I, I, this, but this is a this is a false and a weak doubt, and so it's, it, that, they, that they try to show. If you don't have knowledge, though, you might. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Imam Malik knows better. So we better follow Imam Malik then and leave the statement of the Prophet. So that's what they're gonna say. It's not like that. It's not like that. No, Imam, Imam Malik has an excuse why he didn't follow that way. Even the scholars of the of the Maliki Madhab, from the best of them, uh, Al Imam uh, Ibn Abdul Bar, he has a book called a Tamheed from the greatest uh, books of the explanations of the narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. After that, the only book that would compare to it is, Fat, is Fat al Bari. Fat al Bari is no no doubt the most important book with regards to explaining the narrations of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. After that is is a Tamheed by Ibn Abdul Bar and uh, in Fat al Bari he mentions many of the statements of Ibn Abdul Bar from that book, a Tamheed. In any case, there's a handful of positions Imam Malik has made that's clearly in contradiction to the Hadith, for authentic Hadith. Uh, Ibn Abdul Bar, he mentions these things and, and, every, and every time you'll find, he'll say, لَعَلَّ هَذَا الْحَدِيثَ لَمْ يَبْلُغِ Imam Malik. He said, most likely this narration didn't reach Imam Malik. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because he himself, Ibn, Ibn Abdul Bar, he died in the year 463. So he came uh, you know, 300 years after Imam Malik. But he, he's, he himself 
although he is from the greatest scholars and followers of Imam Malik, he's the leaders of the Madhab, now whenever he sees the evidence, he follows the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, and he makes an excuse for Imam Malik. This narration here must not have reached him. Because all we know about him and Malik and everything that he has said is that you must follow the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. But here we find him, he himself did not follow this narration. What happened? What happened? He's telling you, most likely this narration didn't reach him. Most likely this narration. And then, then they're going to bring another doubt. We say, oh, how? He's the great scholar of hadith. How could it not reach him? It reached you. <laughs> we say, <laughs> we're gonna say yes. This has been there. All of these, if you have knowledge, it's like light. It's well, it's like light. There's narrations. Ali Malik, he's teaching the people, and a man he asked him, "Do you, do you, do you, do you? Whenever you make wudu, do you take your pinkies or do you take your finger and go between your your toes?" He said no. He said no. His student was sitting with him, uh, Abdullah ibn Wahab. Abdullah ibn Wahab is one of the greatest students. Uh, of of, of, of Imam Malik, he's sitting there in the gathering and he heard the fatwa. And he waited till the people left and he went to Imam Malik. He said, "We, I heard you make the fatwa that you don't you don't clean between the toes with your finger. He said, I have a hadith with this. He said, let me, let me have it. So he mentioned the chain of narration and he mentioned the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the, 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 the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to, to wash between his toes with his pinky. And then whenever Imam Malik he heard that he said this is a good hadith, and then and then Abdullah ibn Wahhab he said after this I heard Imam Malik making the fatwa of cleaning between the toes in this manner. Mm. So the point is that the the Sunnah is not gathered in the in one man. This that that the, the, he will not know every hadith. Even there's examples. Even there's examples. Whatever an Imam he will have at one time he will know the Sunnah. And then he'll forget. He'll forget. It's been it's been mentioned from Umar, radiallahu anhu, that him and Ammar ibn Yasir, radiallahu uh, anhum, Ammar ibn Yasir and Umar, radiallahu anhum, they're on a journey. And they both woke up Junub in a state of Janaba. And didn't have any water. Umar, he prayed like that. And, and, then, uh, and then Ammar ibn Yasir, he rode around in the dirt. He rode around in the dirt. And then they, whenever they came back, they asked the Prophet ﷺ about that. He said, it would have just sufficed you just to hit the ground with your hands like this and to go like this, wipe your hands and your face, and, and, and you're good. And you're good. After that, this, this, this event happened with Umar and Ahmad ibn Yasir radiallahu anhum. And then later on in the Khilafah of Umar, there was an issue that came up about the Tayammum and Umar, he made the fatwa. And then Ahmad ibn Yasir, and Ahmad ibn Yasir he mentioned to him, but don't you remember whenever... Don't you remember whenever such this has happened? He was like, no, well, I don't remember that. Mm. He forgot the situation himself. And if this is in authentic narrations that Umar, he forgot the situation himself. Like Umar, he was participating. This happened with, with him himself. And they asked the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the ruling. And Ahmad ibn Yasa, he was there. And it happened to him. And Umar was with him. And then later on, Umar, he forgot that. So there was a difference of opinion here. A difference of opinion arised here. And the reason was because Omar he forgot the hadith and the sunnah in that circumstance, and Ahmad ibn Yasir tried to remind him. So this is a, a, a an ex, this is a clarification of why uh, why the the imams do differ. Maybe he forgot the hadith. Maybe he didn't reach the hadith didn't reach him. So we wouldn't say, uh, oh, do you know better than the imam? Or we wouldn't say, oh, oh, he, you know the hadith, but he doesn't know the hadith. La, it's not this. It's not like that. It's not like it's not like that. Not that. That's why we. That's why it goes back to that very first principle, Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad is the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nobody else. Nobody else. So there's a way to deal with these uh, slips and these errors and, and, and a moderate and a correct path and correct understanding. And the one who has light, it will be easy for him. The one who has knowledge, it will be easy for him. And the knowledge, it's like a light. And the more knowledge you have, the greater the light. If you're in pitch darkness and you have a little bitty lighter, can you see far in front of you? If you have a flashlight, can you see far in front of you? If you got a big giant beam, you can <laughs> one of the big you can see all the way down the road to the next block. No. You can see some of them they got beam, you can see all the way up into the sky, you can shine on the cloud. You any so the, the the point is the stronger the light, the further you can see by the permission of Allah. And likewise the the, the knowledge is also light in the heart, in the chest, you any and it is a means to make your chest become wide. You have you have a big chest. You have a big heart. If you have lots of knowledge, beneficial knowledge, proper knowledge, with a good intention, you have a big heart. 
you have a big chest. So therefore, you will be able to carry and understand and bear a lot of different circumstances and situations. The person who has a tight chest, this is a person who has only a little bit of knowledge, he will hear about it, it will bother him. He will not understand it. He will, he, will, he, will, he will think everything that is, that is not, not according to what he knows is innovation. He, everybody is an innovator except for me and my friends. Nobody is Salafi except for, those, except for me and who comes to my masjid. Everybody, like he will have thoughts like this. Some of them, they believe that. Nobody is Salafi except for me and you <laughs> and my friends. Oh, you're my friend? Yeah, he's Salafi too. Mm. Everybody else, nobody else is Salafi. And the world. Well, like they have in, in these neighborhoods around here that we're living in. Mm. There's people that are saying this right now and they're teaching their people this right now and they don't even know Arabic themselves. They don't even know Arabic. They don't even know how to read the Quran properly. But then nobody, nobody Salafi but them. Aki, what is that? How do you even spell it? Salafi. Said S. No, no, no. In Arabic. Uh, come on, Aki. Come on, Aki. You know, learn your learn your rank. Learn your position. No, this is not the case. So the point is, if you have more knowledge, your chest, your heart become bigger. So you will be able to identify these things. So maybe you will find somebody that's not following the Sunnah properly. But you'll be able to deal with it. He was how he's blind following the Madhab of Hanafi. May Allah guide him. May Allah guide him. But is somebody who blind follows a, a, an upright and righteous scholar an innovator? Is he an innovator? No, he's not an innovator. He's not an innovator. So we wouldn't go to extremes. If you don't have knowledge, maybe you're going to see somebody doing something different than what you know. And so you're going to go, oh, look at that innovator. But really, he's not an innovator. He's just blind following a Madhab that's allowed for him. He's ignorant. So it's not good to call him an innovator, to call him a hisbi, to call him this, to call him that. This is transgression. This is oppression. This is leaving the straight path. So this is going to extremes. So it's one thing to be a blind follower and to, to blind follow somebody in a bad position where the hadith is stronger in another aspect. And it's another thing to be an innovator and to introduce newly invented matters into the religion of Allah. That's major. So And also it's major to call an ignorant person an innovator. You understand? That's great oppression. That's a great crime. So the person who doesn't have knowledge, he's going to do the likes of these affairs. He's going to fall into the likes of these affairs and it's going to be a problem for him. As for the one who has light, then it will not bother him. Uh, 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 there's a great scholar in our days. His name is Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Aqil. Rahimahullah, we close with this one. I'm sorry, I'm taking your time this morning. <laughs> uh, he's from the scholars of Medina. Alhamdulillah, I benefited from him. Uh, from the great scholars of Dawah Salafiyyah in our days, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Aqil. Uh, he, he said, uh, he mentioned a story. Uh, there's, a, there's a famous story of a, a man, he is blind. A man, he was born blind. And then he got his eye, his eyes sight back for just a moment. And, uh, but whenever he got his eyes sight back, the only thing that he saw was a chicken, a rooster. And then he lost his eyesight again. So the only thing he seen in his whole life, the only thing he witnessed with his eyes in his whole life is a rooster. So everything that everything after that in his life, he compared it to the rooster. Is it what, what, what is it? What, how big is it? Is it big as a rooster? Bigger or smaller than a rooster? Is it like so? Everything that like this is the only thing that he knows in life that he ever seen is a, is a rooster. So everything besides that is compared to that. <laughs> Whenever he asked about this, so he mentioned this right here, and then he says some of the students of knowledge they're like this. They'll read, they'll read one book. For example, they'll read the book, the, the description of the prayer by Shaykh al-Bani, rahimahullah. They'll read this one book and they'll think that's it. This is the only book. This is the only, everything in this book about the prayer is 100% absolutely correct. And all of the scholars agreed upon it. And anybody who is opposed is misguided. <laughs> and this is the only way that's ever going to be accepted to pray. And anybody who prays other than that, he's not upon the sunnah. <laughs> like, like this, some of the people, they think like that. And that's not the case. That's not the case. That's not the case. So this is from having little knowledge. And also, if that's coupled with having a bad intention to follow desires, then the fitna, the fitna and the trials that come about from that are even more severe. So a person he has to strive to learn the sunnah properly and to understand it correctly and to implement it in his life and to be truthful in that. And the one who is truthful and sincere with Allah, then he will... Uh, he will be tested. Uh, he will be tested in his faith. But if he is steadfast, then Allah will guide his heart. And Allah will open up his chest and he will be able to see. He will be directed to people uh, who will benefit him in his religion, who will be a means to help and guide him. So many good things will come from purifying and rectifying the intention and being patient upon that. 
being impatient upon that. We shouldn't think that, oh, I'm going to be sincere and then we're not, not going to be tested. No, a person will be tested. There'll be trials. There'll be difficulties. There'll be hardships that will come. But the one who is truthful and he's sincere and he's steadfast and he bears those hardships, then Allah will open up his heart. And Allah will facilitate for him and he will be able to see clearly. And he will be upon a straight path by the permission of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our efforts in, in these days and to grant us beneficial knowledge and a good understanding of his religion and to make us from those who strive against their souls to implement that which they know seeking the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla to save us from our whims and desires and the people of misguidance uh, that was sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam I apologize